Hey everybody, Alan here. Thank you for joining me today. Are you crazy curious about SaaS? Wondering if there is a difference between bookkeeping for traditional company and a SaaS company? Or trying to wrap your head around SaaS accounting because you're operating a SaaS business? Well, I'll crunch your thirst for this knowledge now. Let's do it. Yes, there is a difference between SaaS accounting and cash accounting for traditional businesses. Why? Well, because the SaaS business model is very different from a traditional brick and mortar cash based business. Before we jump into fray, so to speak, let's first talk about what a SaaS company is and what it does. SaaS companies provide software as a service to their customers. The way in which the service are delivered may vary based on their customer subscription plan. So SaaS companies have revenue based on the way they deliver their services. Moreover, SaaS subscription may cover multiple deliverables, including support and maintenance, implementation, initial license, customization, training, on-site support, software tech integration, and software updates. Major difference between the SaaS model and a traditional business are that the SaaS business has lower cost of goods and service, mainly because of marketing, sales, hosting tech, supporting the product itself, higher gross margin, likely 60 to 80%, variable cash flow dynamics based on recurring payments and release of earned revenue. What type of accounting method is used for SaaS companies? Accrual accounting is the accounting system used by SaaS companies. In accrual accounting, income and expenses are recorded when they are incurred, not when they are paid or the money is received from the customer. Accrual accounting can properly record and distribute routine charges, periodic payments, and one-off one charges, and upfront payments. What kind of accounts do SaaS companies have? Some of the accounts may include accrual revenue, deferred revenue, general and administrative expenses, advertising and marketing, commission structures, research and development, subscription feed, depreciation and amortization of intangible assets, changes to equity, sales tax, monthly recurring revenue, MRR, annual recurring revenue, ARR, and turn rates. Accrued revenue, revenue that has been earned by the SaaS firm, but the customer hasn't been billed yet. It is an account receivable and may be credited if there are add-on purchases during the subscription period, plan-based and quantity-based upgrades, or one-time charges like setup for migration fees. Deferred revenue. Deferred revenue is also known as unearned revenue. This is money that has been paid by the customer for future services, but it cannot be considered revenue until the SaaS company has delivered the prepaid services to its client. In case you can't get catch on what we're doing, we're breaking down all these terms that you need to know if you're a SaaS CEO sitting at me saying, man, how do I figure out bookkeeping for my company? Well, I'm breaking it all down one by one. So let's get right back to it. General administrative expenses. That is the cost incurred for running the business, but they cannot be allocated to a specific product or services. For example, the company's website that lists its product services is a general administrative expense. Advertising and marketing. Mark money spent to promote a SaaS firm's goods and services, get sales, and increase sales. Commission structure. The bonuses, perks, commission paid to salesperson. Since they are paid monthly, quarterly, and annually, they will accrue on the company's books. Research and development. Costs incurred for improving products, beta testing products, and developing new products. Subscription fees. Like COGS, they include licenses, network fees, and usage fees. Depreciation and amortization of intangible assets. Every month, the software license you borrow or sell have their own set of expenses that must be recognized over their lifetime. Changes in equity. Sales companies that are incorporated, public traded, who have silent investors to help with their funding. Then you need to account for stock expenses and dividend a very important subject in the world of startups and IPOs. Sales tax. Any sales tax that a SaaS company was required to pay to the states and counties and countries where it does business. This can become very complicated for a company because states all have their different sales tax laws and can even vary within the jurisdiction. Recurring revenue. Recurring revenue are tracked because they can be used to assess a SaaS business revenue growth, momentum, and used to determine when and how to invest based on the business monthly and annual recurring revenue. So then let's break down the next few terms. Monthly recurring revenue, or MRRs, that is the business's total monthly recurring revenue. Customer subscription plans are not considered when telling the MRRs. The MRR tells you whether your monthly income is growing, shrinking, or stagnating. It's a great, great indicator of a SaaS business health because it tells you the amount of predictable income the business will receive every month from the business's active customer subscriptions. Moreover, you can compare it to your expenses and calculate the amount of extra income you will have every month to reinvest in your business. The MMR includes recurring charges from discounts, coupons, recurring add-ons, recurring customer subscription payments, but exclude one-time fees. MMR is calculated by multiplying the number of subscribers using a monthly plan 
by the average cost of the subscription plan per customer. For example, if you have 100 customers and their subscriptions are worth $150 per month on average, your MLR is $10,000, which is 100 customers times $100. And your recurring revenue, otherwise known as ARRs. That is the business's total earned income from client contracts for a period of 12 months or more. The annual revenue earned by business from its customers and your subscription, this is predictable in revenue for the business on a whole year's basis. Like the MRR, it is used to measure the financial health of business. By reviewing a business's ARR, you can determine business is growing, shrinking, stagnating, but on a much larger scale. Plus, it can be used to identify trends in the company's sales, renewals, upgrades, add-on, downgrades, and lost subscriptions. ARR may include revenue from new and renewing customers, upgrades, add-ons, and revenue lost due to downgrades and lost subscriptions. AR can only be used for contracts that are a year or longer. Let's look at an example. Your business has 30 customers with three year subscriptions value at a total of $4,500 each. Your ARR is $45,000. How did we get that? That's 30 customers times $4,500 divided by three years. Next, let's talk about churn rate. This is the rate at which customers stop buying goods and services from a SaaS firm. It's like the customer's retention rate. Your churn rate will tell you your customer's retention rate, satisfaction rate, and whether your marketing and customer service efforts are paying off. So, are you ready to start setting up your spreadsheets and calculating all this stuff yourself? <laughs> That's what I thought. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, there is an easier and less time consuming and more efficient way to do SaaS bookkeeping and accounting. And that is to buy SaaS accounting software. SaaS accounting software ranges from extremely basic to comprehensive packages designed for large companies that handles thousands and maybe a million transactions every month. It also varies in its user friendliness, simplicity, and features like bank reconciliation, double entry accounting, and SaaS metrics. If you're a SaaS startup or a small company, it's great to start off with something that can do invoicing, taxation, sales tax calculation, record bookkeeping, and doing recurring billing. Depending on the SaaS accounting software you purchase, you may have access to the following features. Cash flow forecasting, third-party payment integration, consolidated billing, cloud-based storage, CRM integration, inventory management, real-time analytics, ability to track over 40 SaaS metrics like lifetime value, MR, ARR, double entry accounting, bank reconciliation, processing of third-party payments, ability to accept process payments from 31 more countries, ability to process payments made using foreign currency at real-time exchange rates. If you're in the market for SaaS accounting software, consider the following software packages. Sage Interact, FreshBooks, QuickBook Online, Xero, Soho Books, Gold Carlist, SaaS Optic, Charify Plugins, and Wave. Those are all a great options to consider. While we're discussing SaaS metrics and accounting software, let me ask you one really basic question about the SaaS business model. When is SaaS revenue recognized by a SaaS company? This is super important for all SaaS founders, CEOs to know about. So if you don't know this, pay attention to the next part. This is gonna change your life. Really? There are five criteria for SaaS revenue recognition. They are the price of the services and hoard goods can be determined. Collection of payment is likely. There must be evidence that there's a contract between the customer and the SaaS company. The service paid for by the client must be delivered by the SaaS business. The cost of the subscription must be allocated across the different services and products supplied by the company to its customers. Are you wondering why standard accounting is used for SaaS companies? This is a great question. If the SaaS business model is so different from a traditional business, why does it have to conform to standard accounting practices that apply to traditional businesses? Well, there must be a standard way to compare SaaS firms and evaluate them. Using accrual accounting, all SaaS firms can be compared to one another and comply with a generally accepted accounting principle, also known as GAAP in the US. This makes it much easier for outsiders to analyze the financial statements released by SaaS companies, their growth, momentum in the market, and market preparedness and how they rate compared to other SaaS firms in their niche. Furthermore, by using accrual accounting and standardized accounting principles, outside investors and business partners financial institution can get a much more accurate picture of the health of a SaaS firm. If it can pay its operating costs and know that if it can turn a profit. Finally, if SaaS firms are generating financial statements on a monthly, quarterly, and annual basis, you can identify trends in their sales, expenses, and revenue. The trends can be used to forecast future budget, expenditures, 
revenue, and profit. Okay, should we recap? SaaS companies use accrual accounting because of the way that they receive their customer's payment and deliver services to their customers. SaaS fees can cover many different services, so the payments must be broken up and allocated to the credit accounts. There are five criteria that must be met before a SaaS company can recognize revenue. These criteria are there to prevent the recording of revenue before it has been earned by the company. The accrual accounting method is in compliance with gap accounting, and this is very important if you want to be looked at as a legitimate company. SaaS companies' financial performance can be easily compared within and outside the industry because they follow gap. SaaS accounting software performs basic and advanced SaaS booking accounting and it's gonna be monumental for you to choose the right one for your company. So hopefully that has helped and give you some really great foundation information about SaaS accounting and the basics. If you're thinking about starting a SaaS business, if you're already established and just looking for bookkeeping help, make sure you continue to subscribe to this channel so I can provide more and more tips about bookkeeping, financial statements, taxation, sales tax, tax deductions, and tax credits. So once again, subscribe to my channel, please and hit that thumbs up button. If you have any questions or any comments for me on how to improve and the more information you would like to know, feel free to leave a comment below and we always promise to answer every single one to the best of our ability. Thanks so much again for watching, Alan out.